You're watching TVC Breakfast. It's time to take a look at uh, the headlines this morning across uh, newspapers in the country. And I have with me two lawyers to make sense of all of these issues we'll be looking at today. I have Jide Ologun here in the studio. It's nice to see you, Jide. Good morning, good morning. Mike. Great. And I also have Tuji Adbulamid here. Tuji, good morning. Good morning. Good Thank to you see you. Me. Great. Uh, both of you are on white. Is there, are we going for any uh, <laughs> meeting today? An association meeting? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but it's nice. You guys look good. Thank uh, let's you. get into uh, the story. The first news is where we start from. First news says, Southeast violence, Buhari spits fire, vows to deal with perpetrators. Says, will treat promoters of insurrection in language they understand. Will shock those plotting to destroy my government. The president is quoted as saying this. Raising INEC facilities won't stop 2023 elections. These are all issues on the front page of the first news. From there, let's go to Daily Times. Daily Times says, intrigues, confusion over death of NECO registrar Obioma. It was really troubling when we, uh, the news broke out uh, that uh, he had passed on. But the controversy lies more in uh, uh, the first story that came that said that he was assassinated or murdered or killed uh, or strangulated and another story said that uh, he died of natural cause and that caused a lot of controversy across the country as to the cause of death. That's Daily Times. From there let's go to the leadership newspaper. We'll shock those who want to destroy Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari is saying this will shock those who want Nigeria to destroy, or those who want to destroy Nigeria. All right? That's a word from the president. We'll be talking about that as we get along. Blueprint newspaper is where we go next. Our six-year records demystified uh, naysayers. Our six-year records demystified naysayers. The federal government is saying this on Blueprint. Releases documentary on achievements it says security challenges wouldn't be cloud Buhari's vision. Okay, that's a blueprint newspaper. From there, let's go to Business Day. Business Day says competition drives local airlines to put market before cost. Competition drives local airlines to put market before cost. Okay, that's the Business Day. We have, we've seen new entrants coming in to crash the prices of uh, airfares from the report we're getting. And... Uh, uh, for flyers and for those or for passengers, let me say, I guess uh, that's a good thing for them. National economy is next. Is uh, is of is focusing on failed banks, depositors to wait more as NDIC faces difficulty in assets recovery. Uh, blames delays on litigations, poor documentation by banks and others. All right, that's the national economy. News Direct is where we go next, and is focusing on insecurity. I have no third term agenda. That's the President Buhari saying this. I have no third term agenda. Warns destroyers of national assets. Okay. That's uh, the President coming out clearly to say, no, I don't have interest for third term. So let's focus on something else. Nigeria Tribune is where we go next. Uh, shock awaits those who want to destroy my government. Buhari is saying this, President Buhari says this, says burning of INEC offices won't stop elections. Okay, that's a, a word from the President. We'll be looking at this as we get along. This day newspaper is where we go next. Promoters of insurrection are in, are in for a rude shock, says Buhari. And vows attacks on INEC's assets won't stop future elections. Reassures Nigerians no third term ambition okay that's this day the nation newspaper buhari to arsonists killers agitators i will shock you all right buhari to arsonists killers agitators i will shock you no excuses president tells service chiefs and ig attacks on INEC facilities won't affect future polls that's what the president has said all right that's the nation newspaper the punch is next Stop threats, PDP tells Buhari, as federal government again promises tough actions. Stop threats, PDP tells Buhari, 
as federal government again promises tough actions. President blames politicians jostling for power, says he will be hard on troublemakers. Lead battle against insecurity, match words with action, enough of threats. The PDP is quoted as saying this. All right, from there, let's go to the uh, Daily Sun. Daily Sun is next. Constitutional review, that's the focus. Governors, others make fresh demands. Scrap Senate now, Akeru Dolu is saying this. 1999 Constitution below standard by Jabia Miller is saying this. That's the Speaker House of Reps, House of Representatives. NLC wants minimum wage retained in exclusive lists. All right. I'm, so, I'm certainly sure uh, my guests will be interested to talk about this when we start. Then Vanguard newspaper is next and is also talking about constitutional review. Scrap Senate, cut number of reps, slash federal government size. Akiru Dulu, the governor of Ondo State, is, uh, is recommending this. You know, he is uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, a former president of the Nigeria Bar Association. So when he makes a statement like this, everyone will certainly know he knows what he's saying. Nigeria in dire straits. No effort must be spared to stop the free fall. Governor Kiri Dolu is saying this. And, all right, there's several other liners here and uh, writers there on that headline. From there, let's go to the Guardian newspaper. Federal government targets private refineries to offtake over 300,000 barrels per day. PDP alleges a uh, plot to fritter 1.7 trillion through an NPC deal. Stakeholders hail decision as against the refineries rehabilitation and all of that. Okay, that's uh, the Guardian newspaper. Daily Trust is next. Anxiety in Yari's camp as Matawali concludes plans to join uh, the APC. I am still consulting uh, Zafara. Governor is saying this. We, we aren't bothers. A ex governor is saying this. And APC PDP uh, mom on this. Okay. That said, uh, the Daily Trust newspaper. All right, let's get into, let's start with uh, the story on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune that says, a shock awaits those who want to destroy my government. Uh, President Buhari is quoted as saying this and says, burning of INEC offices wouldn't stop elections. All right, Gide, let me start with you on this. Uh, Nigerians were saying they wanted to hear the president talk and not the presidency. Because there has been presidency talking about different things, statements were issued at different times. They say we want the president, we want to hear from our president. Let him talk, not the presidency. Now the president has spoken. How does this ameliorate or give you confidence in the, in the state of things right now? Naturally, the president should be interested in preserving his legacy. Mm -hmm. you know, what legacy is, is a different ball game. So if he is not comfortable with those who are trying to, you know, derail his processes. I quite agree with him. That is the natural uh, law of nature. But I would rather advise that the president should focus more on delivering on the expectations of democracy. Because here again, uh, he has spoken like a military person, you know, threatening shock. I think Nigerians are already in enough shock. And I will expect that he pays attention to the violence going on in the country. The insurrection he is making reference to is uh, the violence against authority. And you can see what is going on in the no uh, southeastern part of the country now. Mm -hmm. INEC, infrastructure being burned, police stations and things like that. And I think it's a sign of failure on the part of the government generally because if you look at section 14 subsection 2 of the nigerian constitution 1999 as amended it says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary mm. purpose of government so the big question now is that why is it so easy under a government to have that level of destruction going on so it doesn't matter where it's happening and now some nigerians are bringing some regional intonations into this that okay first confront those who are bombarding the northern part of the country the boko haram and recall that at a point in time ipop was declared was uh, uh, proscribed mm. while boko haram is still so we still have the ethnic elements and regional elements featuring 
in the body language of the government and we don't need this what we need is to unite the people and where there is unity there should be visible peace in the land the question is is there peace in the land now so uh, try, this this again talking about public relations it uh, has not you know branded the president very well before the people because it should be connecting emotionally with the plight of the people and driving towards ensuring peace is restored to the land all right Tunji, uh what's your opinion on this because the point there is the president is the commander-in-chief and he's coming to say that uh, he will deal with those who are perpetrating uh, uh, violence those who are behind it, levels of insurrection and uh, he said there is shock well we don't know what that shock is uh, but when the president makes a statement like that of course we expect that uh, he of course he has looked at all the strategies and what he is going to because he has all the uh, security all the intelligence on his table and all of that what do you make of this I, I think um, the issue of uh, shock or the threat by the president is not new, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. This is not the first time. You remember a few months ago, we were told the, the bandits in, in the East and Far House somewhere were given two months to cease action. The, the, the Tankara's uh, abduction, the president said that would be the last uh, mm -hmm. abduction. And today, we still have a... Uh, uh, thereafter, in fact, a week after or so, there was an abduction. There was so uh, the Greenfield uh, abduction and some of that. In so I, rather than President threatening or expecting us to be shocked, I think I should be shocked by the action of the President. I want to be shocked by seeing what the President has done, hmm. not by President intimidating me that, look, they will be shocked. We have been told names will be released some, uh, a few months ago that uh, about those who are in, hmm. I have not seen anything. So I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, so much uh, carried away by the president's uh, statement. Yeah, I, why I, I am not in support of a uh, burning of uh, as national asset and uh, or any asset for that matter in the country, the police station, the INEC office, or any other anybody's uh, property. I also respect the fundamental right of people to to to, to agitate. They, I am not. I, I am worried the way and manner people are going about the agitation. Uh, and I think uh, I will not. Bl I will also blame the president for not taking the right step. I would have expected the president to call the agitators and uh, uh, engage with them. But at, at, at what point would he call the agitators? Now? Uh, after after uh, some of the agitators have been proscribed, their groups have been proscribed. So, uh, what what legitimate uh, 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 standing will they have now to engage? You see. When you don't take the, the right step at the right time, or when you wait till it should degenerate into crisis mm -hmm. before you take action, that's what you see. You know, I, and I've been saying this, I, this is not the first time, the president has been doing this since 2015. The like to waste time in taking decisions on critical national issues. But then, at that time when we were saying it, they were telling us, the president is taking his time. Is that some somebody that would think, well, as a president, you, you, you must think fast. You must think times 10 of what I would think. Because you are in a position that you must take decision fast, fast. But what we see in this country is that we will see crisis going on somewhere. The presidency will still be waiting for somebody to come and brief them. When everybody is seeing the crisis already, they will be waiting for that. We are not, we are not being told. But they say and you are the you are the leader. You must not wait. When you see fire in your house, they say must you wait for anybody to tell you that fire will come and come and quench it. They say slow and steady wins the race. Not that, not this kind of race. <laughs> not this kind of race. There are there are races that that, that requires a, what's it called a spontaneous. A, Action. Hmm. These are the issues, and, I, and, and like I said, the issue of uh, engaging them in a, a gunshot or fighting them or whatever will not solve. We only aggravate the issue, hmm. and I, I, I expect the president to engage all agitators and then see what are they. Because some people are agitating. Nobody is, is, is asking them question. Nobody is saying what is the, what, what they are saying is that they want to overthrow over the government. They want to overthrow the government. Even if they want to overthrow the government, at least hear from the mouth first that our our purpose of agitation is to overthrow the president. Call them first and let, let them not say that. Don't assume for them. What they are saying, from what they've said, they've been saying, they've not said they want to overthrow government. They are asking for certain things to be done. They, are, they say there's injustice, there's inequality, there's whatever. They want it to correct, correct it. So you call them, give them assurances that this thing will be done, and take steps that will show them that, look, you are really uh, interested in what they are saying. Not about threatening and, uh, and uh, expecting people to be shocked. I, I will not be shocked. 
Because uh, it will still remain the main statement. Nothing will happen there after. All right. Well, this time around, we we'll wait to see uh, what comes out. Let's let's move let's move from there to another national issue now on the uh, pages of the newspapers. Daily Sun uh, is focusing on constitutional review, and uh, governors others make fresh demands. And one of the demands that is uh, is is generating a lot of attention is the one coming from the governor of uh, uh, Ondo State, uh, Arakuri Rutimi Akeudolu, who says, who is recommending that the Senate should be scrapped. He is saying that the number of uh, uh, members of House of Representatives should be reduced. We should have a unicameral legislation. And, uh, you know, he has several things he's, uh, you know, recommending in that regard. Jide, talk to us. <laughs> It's a, <laughs> it's a very beautiful uh, suggestion. Mm. I'll drop it at that point. But the big question is that who is to scrap? Mm. Who are the ones to review the, you know, I mean, even when people make their contributions, it still goes to the National Assembly. And are you expecting the beneficiaries of the bogus allowances and salaries in the National Assembly to say, okay, we are going back home, you know? I mean, we know that at the state level we have the unicameral house of assembly mm -hmm. and if you look at the weight of the bicameral at the national level one and nine senators you multiply their allowance and everything and 360 house of rest member and again i think right now people are concerned that the impact of carrying this burden is not manifesting in national development because let me ask a simple question if today we have 24-7 electricity in Nigeria. The minimum wage is 300,000 Naira per month. I know you like that. <laughs> you see, we have peace, health facilities are there. We are doing well in IT. We don't even know we have a constitution. Mm. You know, it's, it's because things are not working. And so it may be that even if you reduce it to unicameral, if we don't change our governance mindset, our approach to the so-called democracy if we don't focus on engaging the resources of the nation to develop the nation we just be changing the nomenclature and what it it, it may be out to reduce the burden but if we don't clamp down on corruption if we don't unite and ensure that we develop capacity i mean we are going nowhere so these are beautiful suggestions but who are the ones to carry them out and the next thing you may begin to read about is that there will be a reply that you first go and trim down in your state. So you find this debate going up and down. Okay. And Aesop said, after much is said and done, more is said than done. Mm. We need action. I mean, obviously, we cannot deny the symptoms we have in the country now. This is not the best that Nigeria deserves. So how do we make a turn around and begin to move in the direction of prosperity and peace? Okay. Uh, Tunji, uh, the, 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 in, in political science, countries that should, that it is recommended that they should have a bicameral legislation, uh, or legislature rather, and uh, all of those things, Nigeria fits perfectly into a, 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 a scenario like that, where there is multi-sectorial, multi-religious, multi-ethnic, you know, and so on. All of those things are there. And having a, 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 a bicameral legislation, help, uh, legislature rather, helps to take care of so many different interests and all of that. And I believe that those, the wise men who sat down to, you know, put all of these things together, made considerations in all of those areas. If we look at the mechanics of it, and saying, okay, let us cut down to a unicameral legislation and ha legislature and have a part-time uh, 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 House of Parliament, as the case may be. What, 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 what kind of scenario can play out when people are still even calling for state creation, people are calling for more delineation of uh, constituencies and so on? Yeah, you, you are right. I want tend to agree with you to an extent that, uh, look, cutting down, looking at our situation in the country, mm -hmm. our, our, our ethnic and religious, uh, whatever, yeah. we, it may not be easy for us to do uh, a natural, uh, in natural uh, uh, in camera uh, system of government. And I am of the, one of those who believe that, look, the constitution or even cutting down or the bicameral system is what is our, our problem. It is not. 
It's not the number of the state or the number of us of players that's our problem. Hmm. We are just bearing, we are just judging the, the, the main issue. We, we are not addressing the main issue. The, 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 what I know is that they say the more the merrier. The, the more they are, the better they can serve us. But what is giving us problem is that we've allowed few people to on their own circumvent the law and do the law and promote their own personal interest. What am I talking about? We have a, a revenue allocation, uh, whatever, that determines hmm. the, their, 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 their emoluments. Their emoluments. Mm. They on their own try to fill their own personal uh, emolument and nobody's talking. So we are not seeing that as a body on us. How can we see, how can we now, what we should be advocating for? It's to say, look, your salary and allowances should, be, should not be more than so, 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 so. In, in other words, to have a minimum wage for that as, as well. So if you have, uh, if you reduce the, what can, how can you be collecting millions of naira every month in a country where we are talking about 30,000 30, naira cannot be paid by some governors to, to civil servants? So the major issue is not about the number of people at the National Assembly. It's about the, amount, the money being paid to them. If that money is reduced to, say, a percentage of one million per month, that would, that, would, that, would, that, would, that, would, that would resolve the issue. Because most people who are calling for the, uh, uh, a reduction of the House, uh, National Assembly to uh, natural, mm. it's not because of the number of people there, or it's not because they, are, they, they, they see them as a useless or whatever. It's because they see the, the bogus amount being spent on them as too expensive. So to reduce the expenses, it's just to say, look, as it is, this is what your salary will be and allowances will be. Allowances must not be more than this. Salary must not be more than this. That will, that will solve the problem. Then we are bearing that, we, it's as if we have accepted that, okay, just take whatever you want to take as salary or an allowances, that we want them, your number to be reduced. That's what we're saying indirectly, which is not, which is not the way to go. I, we have a, a, a larger society, we have a larger number of uh, tribe and uh, uh, ethnic uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be represented. Everybody wants his voice to be heard. How, how are you going to determine who and who will come from so if you want to use it? The natural system is not our problem. The natural system is not our problem. It's uh, the ability of those in government or the, the will to ensure that people follow the laid down law and do things in line with law and not in uh, their own whims and caprices. Mm -hmm. Because they, we, we all know the amount specified for the, for the National Assembly. They will know what they are taking. So and nobody is trying to, to say, how can, how can you be con continue with that one? So that is, the, that is the area I expect us to be, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be agitating. We should be talking about reduction of their allowances and the emolument and the other things mm -hmm. like that. Not only the National Assembly, even the executives. All right. the, the number of the, the way the, 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 the allowances are whatever. In the situation whereby you collect 750000 a salary, then you now collect allowances that will run up to 30, 20 million monthly. And then you now tell me, you've, uh, in order to cut costs, we've reduced 50 percent of our salary. How much is your salary? 750. You reduce your effort and to take a 30 million. You know, okay. So that is, that is the area we should be looking at, not about scrapping. All right. Whether you scrap or not, if they still come back and then the, 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 the one you never come back, try to give themselves 15 million per, 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 per month. All right. What, what we have? Okay, GD, uh, from, from the headline here, the Speaker of House Reps, Femi Bojabia Mila, said the 1999 Constitution is below standard. Recall, too, that. Uh, uh, some leaders in the South South had said, we don't need re review of this constitution. Change it as a whole. Remove it. Bring a brand new constitution. Talk to us about this issue of constitution uh, and all of that. Let's, let's enlighten us now. Let's yeah, get it from it, that perspective. It's a, it's a good thing that we are hearing that from the Speaker of the House of Race. Mm -hmm. But as far as I am concerned, I have pointed the attention of Nigerians to Chapter 2 of the Nigerian Constitution that has amended. Mm -hmm. And I have said that if the spirit of the provisions have been implemented 60%, Nigeria should be the third richest country in the world. It's not, there is no perfect document, except the Bible, for instance, I mean, for Christians. What, what are we talking about here? And the Quran for the Muslims. Providing for the people, yes, thank you. Providing for the people, health care, education, ensuring peace. Let me ask you, have you heard about concern of Australia, concern of uh, Netherlands, concern of, uh, of Switzerland? You see, there is, there is a country that doesn't even have written constitution. Hmm. But there is a purpose for government to enhance the fortunes of the people. I'm asking this question now. If today in Nigeria, Nigeria is the second safest country to live in the world, who will be talking about constitution? Hmm. If today in Nigeria we don't have the herders, farmers clashes, there's no kidnapping, people are rejoicing, who, you won't know you have a constitution. We have this crisis because we are being distracted. I mean, this constitution, this same constitution has been reviewed, hmm. not one time, not two times. 
All right, we have several yeah. constitutions. What we are saying now is that can we unite as a country? All right. Can we return to the path of prosperity, love one another? Mm. We have enormous resources. Yeah. So if they like, I, I, let I, them I, review, I, let I, them I, cancel. If they bring new one, if we don't agree to work we'll together as in Amos 3, 3 mm. we'll be going around the circle. All right. We, we have to round off, unfortunately. I know Tuji would have a lot of things to say, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but we don't have any time anymore. But uh, as we get along, we'll certainly be talking about these things. Thank you so much, uh, Gide Logo, for your time on the program. God thank help you. Nigeria. Thank you. And uh, Tunja Bilamid, thank you very much for coming as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Only that you don't, you, you don't allow me to respond. To you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you more time. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see you for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, if Jide is here, he will be my representative. <laughs> All right.